mentorship. That's awesome. So I got a mentor there. Yeah. He helped me sort of develop a business plan and it really like very little of it was um, the, the more broad business planning. A lot of it was like, okay, you got your concept. You have some of these high level things. Here's a spreadsheet template. Yeah. Start like looking at actual expenses. Start putting these in there. This will be like a fake projection for you. Right. Every be like, build that, make assumptions, we'll put those assumptions in a new sheet. Like how much are you going to charge for a beer? How much does it cost for a beer? By the time I got to that, I was working with Cadillac Straits yeah. and they were really supportive in terms of like, okay, well, here's our data for our first year, which was before COVID. Um, so you can kind of base, you know, your projections on that. You know, here's how much it costs, you know, it costs us to make this batch of beer. Here's how much we sell it for. Here's our pricing structure. So it, it gave me a framework to make my own assumptions right. um, and to start playing around with more what my concept would be. And that's where score really came in handy is because then I'd come back and he'd be like, okay, I'm looking at this number. Where's the assumption that number comes from? Yeah. I have to show that. And he'd ask more and more and more questions. So the assumptions would get better. Right. Um, and that's when I started to think, okay, well, I, I, if the numbers are good, I can make this happen. Uh, yeah. so, so let's do it. Um, and by that point I had, um, you know, doing this and talking about this and actually making it real, I didn't realize how much I had romanticized the whole thing to my dad. <laughs> and he was like, okay, so I'd, I'd like to be involved. Um, wow. so between he and I, we, we financed the project, right. um, he, he and my mom and, and I, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, we financed the project. Uh, we, you know, kept grinding those numbers cause it was like, that was the scariest part for me. I've never yeah. run a business. And if everyone's telling me that once I get across that halfway point of running the business, then I can be a good leader. I can be. So just always hammering those numbers, coming back to those numbers. Okay, we hired an architect. They gave us a proposal. Let's plug that in. Show yeah. what our, yeah, you know, all this sort of stuff. Oh, we found a location. Now that we know what our, our uh, you know, lease is going to be come uh -huh. eight months time. So let's plug that in oh my God, we need to make more beer. Let's look at a bigger brewing system. <laughs> hey, guess what? Once you step up to five barrels, way more companies are manufacturing it than three uh -huh. and a half barrels. So now I'm finding bigger systems for less than I would have paid. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, just you pull a thread, you see where it goes, you right. make sure you put it in that spreadsheet. Um, and yeah, um, be able to pivot. Yeah. Um, I forget what the original question was. That was my <laughs> long-winded answer. No, I loved it because I I didn't know that uh, bit about you actually having a, a, a mentor for really putting the entire and, thing together. And it was recommended to me by a good friend of mine who runs a campground in Maine. He has right. a SCORE uh, mentor who he said he'll talk to a, a couple times a year, even though he's up and running on his business. Right. He just needs a sanity check. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, so, plus yeah. You, you've got to you know bounce ideas off people that have actually done it and actually yeah. been through it or seen other people go through it. And like, I imagine, you know, like you said, most home brewers do get that bug of like, okay, I really want to open my own brewery. But like you said, they have no idea when it comes to the business aspect of it. Like, obviously, the main factor is making beer, putting beer out there for yes. people to enjoy. But there is so much more than you have to keep the lights on. Are you still having water? Are you still able to get all the, the yeah, you need? yeah? Are you like you said, finding how location? Do people, how do you get people to come in the door? Yes, that's the other <laughs> thing. Like that's, I mean, again, that's where the whole social media thing comes out right now. And like, yeah. there's so many people. Unfortunately, a lot of breweries are not the best at it. Some are getting very good at it. Um, some are getting way better than I think some influencers are when it comes to breweries. But you know, and then there's some that's like, all right, we have a new beer, yeah. and then two weeks later, hey, we have a new beer. It's like, what yeah. are we doing? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, I, I made ask... I made a very hard decision, which yeah. looking around is not a common decision to make. Right. I hired a brewer who has like I, I had no expectation to find a candidate of this caliber. Right. But a friend of a friend, timing was perfect. Yeah. He came in with 12 years of experience in professional breweries That's and it awesome. quickly became, okay, how do I get this guy to say yes? 
yeah. to me with no reputation, right. um, a brand new brewery. Um, but I, you know, at this point, I'm like, if I can get someone in there that really knows what they're doing and I can focus on the business, mm -hmm. then I might actually be able to make this work. Right. I don't know how I'd do both. Even if I had like, I was in charge and I had an assistant helping me. I don't know how I'd do both. <laughs> I do see that a lot, especially with the local ones here. I was like, how, I mean, they might start that way, but then they end up kind of falling back because the business does take a little more yeah. and then just seeing where it all goes. And so they yeah. can't do the day-to-day -day stuff. So, but yeah, give your brewer a shout out. What's his, what's his name? Uh, Chris Coburn. There we go. Yeah, he's fantastic. He uh, he was previously at a place in Corktown, which is a neighborhood in Detroit That's um, a called name. Batch Brewing. Okay. Um, and even before I met him, I thought Batch had some of the best, you know, consistent quality beer yeah. um, in the area. Um, so when my friend said, hey, um, I'm going to send someone your way, you should really consider hiring him. He's from Batch. <laughs> I was like, Okay. <laughs> yeah. Great. You had me at that. <laughs> well, so I want to go back. You were talking about how you had so many people telling you that you're so good at making beer and, you know, the families and friends. And I have the same thing with uh, friends here that they're like, they, everyone tells them they make good beer, but yeah, they want the criticism. They want to know, Hey, what am I not doing? What am I in? What I, what am I doing? Right. You know, what can I do better? Who were some of the people that you kind of, uh, when you got their feedback, that's the one that was a little more important. No offense to friend, family or friends, but yeah, they they drink beer, but they don't like no beer. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, and you know certainly, the, and you're right. Free beer that was homemade. <laughs> if people are into it, you're never going to hear anything bad about it. Yeah, if it doesn't um, taste like shit, then you've done a good job. But yeah. there are like I have some friends who I know are into certain styles, mm -hmm. um, and I know are into certain beers. So you know it is that you, you gotta. There are friends, um, you know, my buddy up in Maine, uh, one of the guys I knew back in middle school that we reconnected in, in New York. Um, you know, I know what their tastes are. Right. So I'm going, if I have a beer that I know is their taste, I, I gotta be like, okay, honest feedback. Um, and that's how I found out I knew. I'm not all that good at making that <laughs> beer. Right. Uh, it, which is, which is a big problem that I yeah. solved by hiring a guy who knows how to make IPAs. But um, yeah, you know, you really uh, um, like my parents aren't really beer drinkers. They'll try everything I make. They have, my dad's found certain styles he likes. He likes the beer flavored beer. Um, <laughs> right. I so um, I, I will get uh, honest criticism, but it is, it's hard from most of the people you give your homebrew to, you're not mm -hmm. going to hear anything bad. You're not going to hear real feedback from them. Um, but one thing I noticed at Cadillac is, you know, especially making some of the pilot batches as a home brewer, mm -hmm. um, there is a difference between the stuff you give out at the barbecue that everyone says is really great but then you put something on tap in the tap room. Does it sell? Right. Right. So it, it, you, you gotta know that only 10% of the time, 15% of your time from your home brewing crowd, are you getting honest feedback? But right. the people who really do give honest feedback are the homebrew clubs because right. they're all there for the same reason. Let's get better at brewing yeah. or find ways to make brewing more fun. Um, so Royal Oak Homebrew Club, uh, they are a very casual sort of um, uh, homebrew club. I was part of the Coonan Guild of Brewers, which okay. is sponsored, sponsored by Coonan Brewery. Um, they are a much bigger uh, homebrew club with, you know, officers, leadership roles, management, things like that. So wow. there's, a, there's a wide array of people that you can get good feedback from. And then obviously working in the homebrew shop. I start to know which of the home brewers around are really good at what they do right. and getting their feedback on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how I found out about you. Uh, Brandon Grigsby. He's I believe in one of those clubs. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's so, in the Royal yeah. Oak home brew club. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. His, his, his wife, Mel uh, hit me up. He was like, Hey, do you do uh, breweries outside of the DFW? I'm like, you obviously don't listen to the show, but yes, no, I do. <laughs> so yeah, yeah I and actually, I was going to ask you how you found out about us. Yeah, yeah, Brandon. Yeah. Okay. So, and then Fantastic. he hit me up after that too. He was like, "Hey, my buddy just opened a brewery." I was like, "Yeah, I know your wife." Knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I know everything, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's he's. I mean, I imagine you could tell say the same thing, but he's one of those brewers that 
is really loving what he's doing. He's very good at what he he's does. Good. He, yeah. yeah, he would be on my list of people in the area who does know what he's doing. Um, yeah. You know, he he competes really highly in some of the brewery sponsored competitions around right. here. Yeah, yeah, he, he sends us stuff, and I'm just like, this is. I wish I could have it straight because, like, obviously, some stuff maybe falls off from the you know transporting it down here, but it is still fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's he's 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 good. Yeah. So um, he's got a nice little setup in his basement too. I've heard that. Yeah, he's, he showed me videos. I haven't made it up there yet, but I need yeah, to. it's a really simple, straightforward, uh, small little setup. Yeah. yeah. That... No, it's per- it's perfect down there. So I read that you guys are also focusing not only on the beer, but you know, meat and cheese as well. Where and then you know, there's a there's a great story behind this. So where did the love for the meat and cheese pairing with the beer come from? Because there's so many people out there that will always put cheese and wine together, but in actuality, beer and cheese go together way better than uh, wine. Yes, yeah. that is true. Um, I'm not making that up myself. Uh, yeah, no, I, I've heard it I, multiple I learned that. I'd learned, I'd learned that from uh, Garrett Oliver of Brooklyn go. Brewery. Um, he gave a lecture on beer and cheese in Brooklyn at the Museum of Food and Drink. Right. Um, and he had, I didn't know there um, was a museum like that. Otherwise I'd have done done only, only in New York. Right. It's Mm -hmm. weird. Like, um, so, uh, yeah, he was given a lecture. He had, um, I don't remember the name of the other two people, but it was a cheesemonger, um, uh, a licensed cheesemonger and a master sommelier. Wow. And it really was a discussion about how, um, one of the points the sommelier made is that there's nothing wrong with wine and cheese, right? You know, it's, it's a drink, it's a snack, (laughs) it's fine, but people like master sommeliers, people who know wine know that that's not really where the magic of wine pairings is, you know, there are better things to pair with wine that are more appropriate to pair with wine, beer and cheese, however, Mm -hmm. are, um, best friends. Yeah, um, that, you know, the, the particular protein content in beer, the, the type of acidity you're getting from hops, magic happens between beer and cheese when you eat them and drink them together. Um, so it was uh, an evening of, oh, hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> yeah, they were scratching the door so a little bit. Yeah. What are their names? Oh, this is Milo. Milo, and this okay. Is okay. I got an Australian Shepherd back home. Oh, yeah. So much um, energy. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, back to the beer and cheese. So yeah. we did, um, they had pairings of cheeses I, I, you know, would never have heard of at the time. Yeah. Beer I will never have again because it was ghost <laughs> bottles from the, the Brooklyn Brewery cellar. Oh. Um, and just a wild evening that introduced me to something I had not really considered. Right. At a time when I was starting to really like craft beer. Um, and for that to be my drink of choice. Yeah. Um, so then shortly thereafter, I was introduced to a small place that was, again, down the street from my apartment called Astoria Beer and Cheese. Oh, nice. They were doing the beer and cheese thing. So there I was um, right there every week uh, mm-hmm. having beer and cheese. Uh, I took my wife there for our first uh, for our first date. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So um, it really was like, you know, and I didn't even plan on being at that lecture. Right. Uh, it, my, that morning, my buddy, uh, my buddy from Paul from, uh, from middle school, uh, who's now back here in Michigan as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, he and his wife had tickets to this thing. He had some work thing he had to go to last minute. And right. so he's like, take my ticket, go. It's a beer and cheese thing. You'll love it. Ended up changing the entire course of my life. Um, and nice. would not have really known that until probably like it was during COVID when right. we had to think of a food concept. Yeah. And I think it was my wife who just said, we could just steal a story of beer and cheese's concept. <laughs> they're in, they're in New York. We're not like, they're a small place. We're going to be a small place. I'm sure. They wouldn't care. Right. <laughs> right? So um, yeah, we, it's just like, okay, well, let's do some paninis. Let's do charcuterie boards. Let's do French fries. Uh, maybe a few Ooh. salads we're looking at introducing just to expand yeah. the variety. But it's like, at that point, it was like there, I wouldn't have known that that was a life-changing evening until that moment when I was like, oh yeah, I could just do the beer and cheese thing. Yeah. <laughs> 
No one else is doing the beer and cheese thing, which is right. my frustration as a consumer is there this is this 